Namo namaha and welcome back. Now, in our previous segments, we've been looking at this very useful and very common、uh, form, the past passive participle, dikta or bhute krudanta in Sanskrit. Now, if you remember, the ktas,、uh, the PPPs, are words like kruta, kadita, hata, pita, mruta, drushta, and so on,、uh, which are ways in which verbs are turned into adjectives and made to agree with nouns in a sentence.、Uh, this allows you to create appositional sentences, right? Where the participle now functions as what we call a predicate adjective. Uh, an example would be balakena gruha patha patha kruta. The homework was done by the boy. Gruha patha kruta balakena. Ashvena palam kadi tam. The fruit was eaten by the horse. Kanya janakena drishta. The girl was seen by her father by janaka. Uh, in in all these sentences, we have no actual conjugated verbs. We have to understand it as.、Uh, An understood asti, or rather, it's asit, the imperfect past of us. Palam kaditam asit, the fruit was eaten. In all of these sentences, also the participles function in a passive sense, where their the focus is on whatever、uh, object the action of the verb is happening to. That's what's in the nominative. There's going to be exceptions, of course, like in the intransitive PPPs or PPPs for verbs of motion, like gata. In both of those,、uh, in fact, the PPPs do get used in an active sense and go with the agent. But generally speaking, the PPPs are used, as the name suggests, in a passive construction. In this segment, we're going to flip these things back around and learn how to make past active participles, where the focus is once again on the agent of who's doing the action. Not the object that the action is being done to. This is called the ktavatu in Sanskrit, and it's a very very easy form to make once you know how to make the PPP the kta. Right? Here's how you do it: We take a root、uh, when and we first form a past passive participle from the root, the PPP.、Uh, step two: We add to it one of three different endings. All of them are called the vatu,、uh, and it depends on the gender of the agent which ending you add. Uh, the person that's doing the action. If it's masculine, you'll add vant. If it's、uh, neuter, you add vat. And if it's feminine, you add vati. And that's it. You're all set. So, like the PPP, the PAP is an adjective. It, it has to agree with the noun that's in the nominative.、Uh, when it's when the noun is masculine, you use the vant ending, and we get van in the singular, vanto in the dual, and vantaha in the plural. If it's a neuter subject, this ending loses the nasal. It's just vat.、Uh, in the nominative singular, it's just vat. In the dual, we'll have vati, and in the plural, the ending is going to be vanti.、Uh, in the if the agent is、uh, uh, is a feminine noun, you add the suffix vati. This gets declined like the noun goddess,、uh, devi. Right.、Uh, so for the singular feminine subject, the ending will be vati. The dual subject will have vatiyo, and then if there's three or more feminine noun subjects, we'll use vatiyaha as our ending. Put those together. P P P P. The P P P plus the vatu endings. The kta plus the vatu, and you get your past active participle, your P A P. The kta vatu. So for the verb kr to do or make,、uh, first you form the P P P kruta. Then、uh, let's say if you have a monkey who made a sound, vanaraha shabdam.、Uh, then you use the masculine form of the P A P vanaraha shabdam kruta van. The monkey made a sound, a shabdam.、Uh, if there's two monkeys, manaro shabdam kruta van to. The two monkeys made a sound. If it's three or more monkeys, vanaraha shabdam kruta van taha. The three or more monkeys made a sound. We can compare this with the equivalent constructions in the past passive participle using the using the、uh, past passive participles the PPP, which is kruta, and now the focalization is not on the agents, the monkeys, but on the sound, the shabda, the thing that is being made. So we'll get vanarena shabda kruta. The sound was made by a monkey. Vanarabhyam shabda kruta. The sound was made by two monkeys. Vanraihi shabdaha kritaha. The sound was made by three or more monkeys. Vanraihi. As you can see, when we use a PPP, the agreement is constant. 
right? Uh, shabdaha kritaha in all three sentences, since the object shabdaha is still our masculine singular uh, shabdaha. Uh, but in the PAP, the agreement is going to change as your agent changes from singular dual plural, right? Kritavan, kritavantau, kritavantaha. Uh, let's now consider a, a sentence with a feminine subject. If we had an ant who ate honey, for example, we would say pipilika madhu kadita vati. Notice the feminine vati ending here. Now instead of van, which is for masculine, everything else is going to be the same. If there are two ants who ate honey, we would say pipilike madhu kadita vatyo. <coughs> the two ants ate honey. If there are three or more ants eating honey, it becomes pipilikaha madhu Three or more ants ate honey, past active participles. Sometimes you'll get a neuter agent like nayanam the eye. Uh, to say Shiva's eye opened, for example, we can use the verb involving the prefix ud plus the root mil, which mean, together means unmilati he, she, or it opens. Uh, the PPP is unmilita, so we, to make the neuter PAP, we would add the ending vat, and we get shivasya nayanam unmilita vat. Shiva's eye opened. If two, or, two of Shiva's eyes open, we would say shivasya nayane unmilita vati, with a long e. If heaven forbid all three of Shiva's eyes opened up, we'd be in a lot of trouble, but we would say Shivasya Nayanani Unmilitavanti. Uh, and we'd probably want to start running away as fast as we could at that point. Anyway, that's how the PAPs work. There's nothing really tricky about them once we've learned how to make our PPPs, uh, because you just add your van, vat, or vat, the endings to the, right onto the PPPs. It's an extremely useful form as a stand-in for the imperfect past tense conjugation, our lung, since we don't have to remember how to make verb stems using the ganas of the present system. All you do is make, first you make your PPP, you add van, vat, or vati based on the gender of your agent, and you have yourself a very simple past tense. Ramaha gatavan. Rama went. Aham gatavan. I went. Sita gatavati. Sita went. Aham annam kaditavan. I ate rice. If I identify as a male. Aham annam kaditavati. If I identify as a female. Right? Uh, we don't even need to remember the personal parasmaipada or atmanepada endings. Using the PAP makes speaking Sanskrit very, very straightforward. Uh, if you do decide that you want to speak Sanskrit, uh, you'll find the PAP is something you reach for very often. Okay, so with that, we will stop here. I hope you've enjoyed our foray into the passive construction and participles, past passive and past active participles. In our next unit, we'll be returning to the present system once again, back to our 10 verb classes, the ganas and all the great things that come with them. And we'll look at three other verbal forms that we can make within our present system. The imperative, how to make commands, the optative, how to give injunctions or suggestions, what to express what may be, and uh, the present participle, saying how something is happening while something else is going on. So, till then, thank you for watching. See you next time. Punarumilamaha, nanyavadaha.